this coming at school year. Now, before we dive in, let's talk about a couple of frequently asked questions. First of all, there will be a recording available so you can check out anything that you want to review or you can share that link with anybody who you think might benefit from the content. Also in the chat box are all the resources that we're going to be exploring today. Another great way to review what we've covered. And if you have any technical questions at all, lurking around in the background is the fantastic Robin. Robin, would you like to say hi to everybody? Hi everybody, we're so glad you can join us today for this awesome webinar. She will help you troubleshoot any issues that you might encounter. I also would be remiss if I did not mention that we are sponsored today by Blue Apple Projects. Actually, they might come up a little bit later in the webinar. These are great projects that help teachers implement project-based learning in their classroom, helping students to use what they know in order to make the world a better place. Can't recommend them enough. Check out blueappleteacher.org. We are going to get started with an objective. My objective today is to help you realize what sort of superpowers you now have at your fingertips. That's a great way to think about AI. It can superpower you as a teacher and your students as learners. Now, with any new superpowers, if you've watched any superhero movie, you know that sometimes things don't go quite the way that they were hoping. There are some snafus along the way, but with a little assistance, Hopefully we can help you to use these superpowers to do incredible things, saving half of all the life in the universe, or perhaps helping your students to learn more deeply. Now, to illustrate this, I wanna talk about a superpower that I always wanted to have. It's a regular old normal superpower that people actually possess, and it is the ability to make art, the ability to draw, to have this idea in your head and then to be able to express that on paper. That just seems so incredible to me. And I had this epiphany moment about six months ago when I heard about this tool that came out called Dal E that you could just say, hey, here's the picture that I want. Here's the artistic style that I want. And it would create it. This is the very first thing I ever created. I wanted a picture of a baboon fighting a weasel with a stick drawn in a surrealist fashion. And in seconds, there it was. And all of a sudden I began to see the limitless possibilities. It's not just fighting weasels. I could also put baboons on skateboards. I could put baboons in outer space. I could have baboons dress up in old tiny costumes. The only limit was my imagination. Now, my imagination is limited to baboons apparently, but you might have other pictures that you might want to create. You now have new abilities to do that. And it's not just images any sort of text that you want to generate. If you've always wanted to be a poet, to create poetry, you now have the ability to make whatever poems your heart desires. Or you could even do some computer coding. This blew my mind. I said, hey, I want a math game that I can use. I need JavaScript for it so I can put that up on a website. And all of a sudden, I was able to do that. In a matter of minutes, I was able to create a little game that I could use with my students because I now have incredible new superpowers. I can be a writer, I can be an artist, I can be a com computer coder. The only limit is your imagination. So I hope that you are getting excited about the, the possibility of putting these superpowers to great use in your classroom. And to help you to do that, here's the agenda for today. We're gonna talk about what AI is, why we might want to use it, and then we're gonna spend most of our time exploring exactly how to use AI in the classroom. Specific strategies, specific ideas that hopefully you get excited about. A couple of the ideas, I hope that you get excited to put them into practice in your classroom. And then you can go out, experiment, explore, test it out, and see what this tool can do. Along the way, we are going to discover what dogs and minions and Vincent van Gogh have to do with artificial intelligence. So let's get going. And to do that, I want to know who is with us today. So Robin, if you could open that poll up, I want to know what grade of students do you primarily work with? We'll give you just a couple of seconds to get your answers in. Very simple question. You probably know the answer to this one. If you don't, just go with your gut. It's normally right. Robin will give you just a couple more seconds to make your selections and then she will close that poll out and reveal the answers. Oh, Robin, I think they've had enough time to fill their answers in. What are we looking at today? 
All right, we are at 47% middle, 28% upper elementary, so 3-5, 23% high school, 11% lower elementary, so K-2, and 9% admin or other. Marvelous. All right, regardless of who you are working with, I think you're going to find some great stuff that you can use today. This tool is super flexible. These tools are super flexible, super powerful, and we got to figure out what exactly they are. To think about AI, we'll think about Alan Turing, the famous mathematician and computer scientist who came up with sort of the test for whether we had artificial intelligence. And he said that if you were interacting with a machine and you couldn't really tell whether what it was generating was from a machine or from a human, then we could consider that to be intelligent. Now, in the opinion of most experts, tools like ChatGPT or Google's Bard have now passed that test. When you see what they create, you can't tell that it came from a machine or from an expert human. It really is incredibly smart, incredibly powerful, and that opens up incredible possibilities. So people are using it for all sorts of stuff, whether they want to create an oil painting of shrimps camp camping, because it sounds like shrimp scampi, whether you want to take a speech that you're writing and add a little humor to it, whether you want to do some translation or whether you want to fix bugs in code, there's all sorts of possibilities. So AI is this incredibly versatile, powerful tool that mimics human intelligence and does it really quickly and easily and well. So that's just a quick overview of what AI is. Let's talk about why we might use AI in the classroom. What could our purposes be? But before we do, I want to talk about why we might not use AI. Simply, when a machine is doing the thinking for our students, then the students aren't going to be learning that particular skill. So um, we can see this in practice by thinking about dogs. Anthropologists have seen that, that humans, when we domesticated dogs, actually had our brains shrink a little bit because of the stuff, some of the stuff that we used to need to do. Now dogs were doing it for us. And so we lost some of, say, our ability to smell because we didn't need it anymore. The same sort of thing can happen when we implement technology. So there's a tendency sometimes to say, hey, well, we're not going to let the machines do any of the thinking. We want our students to do all of it. But that is a danger because we run the risk of teaching our students skills that are going to be obsolete of devoting cognitive effort and attention to things which they don't really need anymore. None of us are really too worried if our students don't learn to smell their way through the forest or to do plowing by hand or even to calculate square roots by hand because we have tech tools to do that for us. Now, this doesn't necessarily make school easier. Learning always comes from struggle, but what AI tools allow us to do is to help us to find the next struggle. I love this frame. What is the next struggle that our minds can wrestle with to grow? We can offload some of the drudgery, some of the busy work onto the machines and allow our students to do more of that human thinking, that building, that making, that creating, that's actually a little more fun and it's gonna be much more important for students to master in the future. So why might we use AI? Well, on the teacher side, we might wanna do it because we can teach more deeply. There are things that these tools will allow you to do that you just couldn't do a year before, and that is exciting. We also can teach more easily. We can take a lot of that busy work, a lot of that drudgery off of our plates. You've got enough to do. And so I'm going to show you some ways that you can use AI tools to make your life easier. Frankly, you do deserve it. For students, we can teach them by using it. There are things that they can do and learn. There are ways that can interact with ideas that they just couldn't do before AI. And we also want to teach them to use it. If we don't help students learn how to use these tools wisely and well, we're putting them behind the curve. These are things that they're going to have to know how to do. And it's incumbent on us to help support them in learning how to use AI tools effectively. Now, Part of that is establishing this attitude that we're going to collaborate with the AI tools. We're not gonna just listen to what the machines tell us. We're gonna use them as a thinking partner. They're gonna expose us to ideas that we can use to expand our own thinking. So when we teach students to use the tools well, we establish this attitude of collaboration. 
where the machine becomes a collaborator that we can work with. Also, really important shift is we want to remember that thinking is fun. Machines can do a lot of thinking for us, but that doesn't mean that we don't want to do it ourselves. For example, machines can solve Sudoku puzzles like that, but that there are still millions of people every year, every day who are solving these puzzles because thinking is fun. And when we use these tools in the classroom, we can remind students of that, that they want to do some of this thinking because it is a part of being a fully thriving human being. So that was just a quick look at what AI is and why we might use it. Now we're going to spend most of our time thinking about specific ways that we can use AI in the classroom. So when it comes to that teacher side of things, when we want to teach easier, how can this save you time, energy, and effort? Well, one thing you can do with ChatGPT and tools like that is you can have it create lesson plans for you. So a couple of simple hacks that I love to use is, first of all, have it do multiple drafts, multiple iterations. Say, hey, what are five different ways that I can do this or 12 different ways that I can do this? Then you get lots of different ideas that you can choose from. Another great hack is to give it some adjectives. If you want your lesson to be fun and meaningful, including those adjectives will direct the machine in that direction. You'll get ideas which are filtered for funness and meaningfulness. You can also use any frame that you want. You can say, hey, I want this lesson to be built in, say, the five E's approach, and it will do that for you. It will produce something that looks like that. I can't quite read that because I'm getting old, but you can see that it is extensive. Now, if it's giving you too much or if it's not giving you what you want, you can just follow this simple fix in plan. Figure out what you don't like about it, and then tell it to fix that. So if it's too long, if you just say, do that again, but make it half as long, it will make it half as long. It is absolutely wonderful. You can take this shift from being the minion who does all of these tasks to being the big boss who tells the machine, hey, this is what I want, and it will do it in a matter of seconds. You can also make your life easier by having it draft communication. So for instance, if you want a parent's letter to be sent home, you can highlight some important points and all of a sudden, there's that professional letter. You can look it over and fix it up in any way that you want. Remember, you're collaborating with the machine, but you don't have to go through the entire process of typing every single word. You need an email. Maybe you're a little upset about something that happened, some parent request that seems a little bit, I don't know, frivolous to you. You can ask the machine, you can ask ChatGPT to come up with a professional response to this and voila, there it is in a matter of seconds. You can also use this to help students get feedback on their work and it does a really great job. If you don't believe me, test it out. Say, hey, here's a student piece. Could you provide some descriptions of what it does well, as well as areas it can improve? And there it does. Really simple, really smart responses to how this piece could be improved. Again, you and the student can look at this. You can think about what you think of it. You can make some revisions, but it does a lot of that first drafting work for you, offloading that off your plate so that you can teach easier. Now, it's not just about teaching easier. We also have the ability to teach deeper. You can create resources that you never could before. Remember, you can be a writer, you can be an artist, you can be a coder. So if you want to make a little computer game for your students, or if you want to make a picture book, you now have the ability to do that much more quickly and easily than you did before. Simple quick hack, Google Slides is your friend when you're creating something that combines text and pictures. So if you're doing something like that, use Google Slide to combine them. You can print that up, make a little picture book for your students, highlight some of the important ideas that you want, and you've got an awesome resource. You can also use tools like ChatGPT to customize what kind of skills practice you're giving your students. So you can see in my prompt there that I said, hey, we want these to increase in difficulty as we go. 
maybe I had a worksheet. I didn't like how it didn't show that progression. So I had ChatGPT do one for me. I can customize the skills practice that my students are doing. I can customize it essentially in whatever way I need. Whatever it is that you want to tweak, you can just ask and it shall be done. It's also wonderful to help you overcome blocks. Maybe you've got a seventh grader who isn't engaged in your classroom. You can ask for some ideas. Again, ask for lots of ideas and you can choose from that brainstorm. It's like having a colleague who you can text at 10, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, and instantly they're gonna share your ideas. And if you don't like any of those, ask for 10 different ones. It can be a wonderful tool just for overcoming blocks and helping you brainstorm some great approaches to whatever challenge you are encountering. I love this one. You can expand your students' horizons. I love to bring guests, visitors into the classroom, experts for the students to interact with, but sometimes that's difficult. You can have ChatGPT take that role. So if you're working on a unit that involves electricity and you wanna do a Q&A with a master electrician, you can have ChatGPT pretend to be a master electrician and it will give incredible, great responses. It's getting so smart. It's passing the bar. It's passing, you know, med school entrance exams. It answers the questions just the same way that an expert would. And it's a great use to have that ability to, to learn from something that functions like a human in conversation. But you don't have to stop there. If you want to establish a connection with somebody who lives in Paris, you can do that. You can even have it translate its responses into French to see what that city is like. You could talk with historical characters. There's Vincent right there. If you wanna chat about his thinking about his art, AI can do a wonderful job of that and let your students learn through conversation. It doesn't have to be human. You can have them chat with a leaf that is photosynthesizing or a mathematical theorem. Again, the only limits are your imagination. I love this one as well. You can let it guide you. So you can, if you go into the hyperdoc, see some text there that will let ChatGPT build its own prompt in response to your answers to questions. So if you need help with math, but you're not quite sure how you wanna tweak your math class, it can ask you questions to help you narrow that down. If you just copy and paste that text into ChatGPT, my goodness, it can help you build just the craft, the prompt that you need. So I've explained a couple of ideas for how to use AI on the teacher side. Robin's got that poll open. If you could just check all of the ones that you might be interested in making use of to teach easier and teach deeper, that would be awesome. Robin's gonna leave that open for just a couple of seconds more to think about it for just a little bit. Check all of the ones that might be relevant to you. How might you like to use AI to teach easier and deeper? Robin, if you want to bring that polling session to a close soon here, and then when you are ready, you can share those results. All right. Wow, what do we see? Like really, really interested in a lot of these. So uh, the top 89% resource creation, 79% plans communication and feedback, 70% expand horizons, 43% overcome blocks, and 33% let it guide you. Outstanding, some really great high numbers there. And that is exactly what I want. I hope that this is useful to you. That's why we do what we do. So that is from the teacher's perspective. Let's explore how to use AI from the students facing side of things. So first of all, we wanna teach them to use it. So we wanna establish the attitude they're gonna collaborate with AI and a couple of different ways they can do that. You can have it brainstorm with them. So if your students get stuck, oh, I'm having trouble coming up with an idea for a project, you can say, hey, why don't you ask ChatGPT? It can come up with a list of 30, and then you can think about what you're interested in, what you're passionate in, and select from amongst those options. You could have it suggest revisions for them. They've got this piece, they wanna make improvements, you could have it give them some suggestions. It's a great way to function like peer feedback, Something I always struggled when I was teaching is getting that great peer feedback that really advanced student understanding. ChatGPT can be a great feedbacker for your students. And again, they can function like that executive. They're not 
having to do all of the minion work, they can function like that executive and pick and choose from the revisions that they really think are gonna improve their piece. It shifts the way that they think to a higher level. You can have them overcome blocks by using this. If they get stuck in any process in your classroom, you can say, hey, maybe this is a good tool to lean on to say, what could I do in this situation? I love this idea of requiring its use. It's kind of the reverse Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn thing. In that famous story, um, when painting the fence became something they couldn't do, it became more desirable. If we switch that around and make chat GPT or AI tools something that you must use, require it, it makes it less of that kind of forbidden fruit and more of a tool that you're gonna use to do your job, which is learning better, more deeply. So shifting it to say, all right, when before you submit, we're gonna require that you brainstorm with ChatGPT or that you get some feedback suggestions. That's a great twist that helps us and helps students view this as a tool. I also love the idea of getting authentic, making students, helping students use their skills and abilities to have an actual impact outside the walls of our classroom. If you can help your students understand that they should use their talents, use their abilities to lift others up and to make the world a better place, then you are doing some great work. And when it comes to AI, I love this quote because I just came up with it a little a couple of days ago. How they can use AI to make a pos positive difference defines how they should use it. How they can use it to make a positive difference defines how they should use it. We want our students to use their abilities to make a positive difference. This is a great principle that we can use to show how they can use AI well. If they're using it to do good in the world, that's probably a pretty good use. So in our Blue Apple projects that we referenced at the beginning of the webinar, we do things like, hey, let's write a script so that you can explain how to uh, prevent the spread of germs. Well, students can collaborate to make a better script so that they can have a more powerful impact. Or if they're making a podcast to explain an important issue and to persuade people of a particular perspective, they can do a better job of it because they are now super powered. Um, in one of the projects, they're building this game that teaches others about financial literacy. They can build a better game with their superpowers and actually have a bigger impact. And if they're using those tools to make a positive difference, you're seeing the way that those tools have the potential to serve the greater good. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. When we think about finding that next struggle, engaging in authentic tasks and saying, okay, the machine can do some of the busy work. Now, what are you gonna do? Shifts it to that kind of hands-on building, making, creating, that's gonna be increasingly relevant in the future. I also love the idea of letting students take the lead. When students experiment, explore, play around with how to use this tool to enhance their learning, they're gonna come up with ideas that you or I hadn't thought of. So let's use that power in our students' minds and our students' creativity to ask them, hey, how could you use this tool to help you understand the world better or to do more good in the world? We also want to teach students by using it. There are new abilities that we have and we wanna leverage those. One of those is customized tutoring. If your student is struggling with essentially anything, you can have them say, hey, I'm struggling with this to chat GPT, and it can engage in this conversational process where you follow up with some questions that you ask, the machine provides some um, additional answers. It really helps narrow in on specific areas of misunderstanding for the student. You can see one here from a statistics course that I was uh, getting some help with. And I love this at the end, I even asked it to ask me some questions to test my understanding. And then it gave me feedback on my responses. So this is a great way to have students focus in on one particular area, to have a conversation with the AI tool, and to even test their own understanding. You can also use AI tools to get more models that students can see to get a picture of what success looks like. So I've always wanted to be able to find more exemplar texts 
for just about anything, now I've got them at my fingertips. This is one of the most powerful things that ChatGPT and AI tools can do for educators. So if you're learning about persuasive essays, you can have it generate some models. You can even make some weaker and some stronger and have students discuss and argue about which is which. You can do it when you're learning about theme. It's not just literature though. You could talk about how to solve a math question. Have the machine explain its thinking and then look at that reasoning and discuss it together. It's a great way to teach deeper. You could have it um, create a claim evidence reasoning about which falls faster in a vacuum, hammers or feathers, and look at how claim evidence reasonings are built. You can have your students um, rank and rate those responses. Open up some really great conversations about what makes that um, response good or bad. One thing that I discover is that ChatGPT is great at producing kind of um, perfect but a little bit boring text. And so you can look at it and say, how could we improve on this? How could we inject a little humanity into this? Which brings me to maybe my favorite game to play with students and AI is Beat Chat GPT. This is really important because for the rest of their lives, students are essentially going to be challenged to say, how can you add value beyond what the machine can come up with? And so you can give them any task that you would like them to get good at and see if they can get better than the responses that ChatGPT comes up with. Those prompts could be about curiosity. They could be about flexible thinking. They could be about content that you want them to be able to produce or humor even, or poetry. The key here is look at what the machine comes up with, look at what the computer comes up with and then say, how can you do it better? In order to do that, they really need to think about the content deeply and they get a chance to really test themselves out to add some particularly human value. It's wonderful as a way to teach them that being different, having a unique or creative perspective on things can be a real value. So I love Beat Chat GPT as a way to help students learn with AI. All right, it's time for our final poll of the day. Robin, if you could open that up. It's actually our penultimate poll. We have one coming up in just a minute. I am super curious to find out what you are interested to use. Do you wanna collaborate with AI requiring its use? Do you want students to get authentic by using what they've learned to have a positive impact? Do you want to let them take the lead to provide some customized tutoring or to do some of this modeling where they can rank or compete against ChatGPT? Robin, why don't we close that puppy up and see what we see? All right. So 73% customized tutoring, 70% model rank, um, beat chat GPT. Then we have collaborate with AI and required at 64%, followed by let them lead at 31% and 29% get authentic. Marvelous. Again, I love to see those high numbers. I'm glad that you're finding some value in this and I cannot wait to hear more about how you are putting it to use. So we have talked about what chat GPT is, um, why we might use AI tools, some specific ideas about how to use them. Now there's nothing left to do but to go out there and experiment and explore. This is how your students learn and this is how you learn as well. So if you do nothing else, head over to ChatGPT and play around with it a little bit. Put some of these ideas into practice, see what happens and revise your own understanding of how to put this into practice in your classroom. Now, along the way, if you need some help, that's what I do. I am a professional teacher helper. And so if you or your school want any assistance, you could schedule a PD session. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There are lots of other ways that we can use these tools in the classroom. I'd be happy to expand on this with your whole staff. I can help consult on how to develop some great policies or best practices for your school or provide some specific coaching on how to use these to help your students to learn better and deeper. If you're interested in that, I've got my email right there. There is nothing I like better than helping teachers. And this could be an incredibly powerful way to do it. I am super curious. If you are interested in any of that, you can please let me know in this final poll, actual final poll this time. Just indicate which of those you think might be useful 
I am really curious to find that out. I know we're running down on time. So Robin, we don't need to verbally go over all of the responses here, but if you give them just a second to finish up and then share those, they can look, they can see what those poll results say. All right, Robin is gonna share those poll results. Hopefully you are interested in some of that because I would love to connect with you to help support you in this incredibly powerful thing. Now, if you enjoyed what you heard today, we've got another practical webinar coming up on August 16 with Double O, Mr. Double O, that's John Osterman. You can register at, for that at bit.ly slash keep learning, that is case sensitive, or at vaei.org. And with that, there is nothing left to do but for myself and my favorite little animal, the baboons, to say thanks a bunch for coming to the session today and also for all of the work that you do to improve the lives and the learning of your students. Have an absolutely marvelous rest of your summer and a great school year.